Hi there and welcome to Richard Barron's Dr. Creepy segment. Be sure to subscribe. The hustle and bustle of the city can take a toll at times, which can cause many citizens to seek out refuge and solitude. But often at times we find ourselves trying to figure out what bathing suit to wear. Okay, I have thunder thighs, what did you expect? Let's get on with it. It's no surprise that many people come back from the great outdoors rejuvenated or enlightened once they are reintegrated back into city life. But what if your getaway turns into a close encounter of the fourth kind? On December 26, 1985, that's what exactly happened to author Whitley Strieber from his cabin in upstate New York. From his 1987 New York Times bestseller communion to the 1989 movie adaptation, we take a look at Whitley Strieber's abduction. Tonight on The Paranormal Cafe, take a look at the abduction of Whitley Strieber to see if the case still holds up all these years later. Before we get into it, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment about what next case you'd like us to uncover next. Do you believe in UFOs? Uh, many people dismiss the stories of visitors from other worlds, but Ritley Strieber has written convincingly of such encounters since he says he was first visited by these aliens in 1985. His newest book about the visitors is called Breakthrough, The Next Step. Whitley, it's great to see you on television after many wonderful nights on the radio. Chapter 1 Who is Whitley Strieber? Strieber was born June 13, 1945 in San Antonio, Texas, USA. He attended Central Catholic Marianist High School and in 1968 he would graduate from both University of Texas, Austin, and the London School of Film Technique. According to Whitley Strieber, he would state that perhaps he may have been subject to other unworldly beings that may have visited him in his youth. Whitley would later meet his wife and Strieber, who was a school teacher and later the two would marry in November 1970. The couple's son Andrew Strieber is their only child. Strieber would later relocate to NYC, where he would quickly rise to vice president for an advertising company. It wouldn't be until 1977 where he would begin his first few popular novels such as The Wolfen, 1978, and The Hunger. 1981. With the success of the two books, both were later made into motion pictures. According to DallasNews.com, Strieber shared a small Manhattan apartment with his wife. A series of strange events there foreshadowed things to come. Chapter 2. The Night of December 26, 1985. At a forested cabin near Kingston, New York. The cabin buttered up against a large state owned area of 15 acres. Whitley mentions during that time the cabin wasn't on any maps. Whitley Stryber went on an excursion with his wife and son to get away from their apartment. It seemed like a good time as they ate Christmas dinner leftovers and went to bed early. They come up here for a few days, which is very normal for them. And the thought occurs to him, oh my God, they've taken my son. I was sleeping, and suddenly these lights came, a light, a big bright light came in my room. And sometimes my dad comes in to see how I'm doing in the middle of the night, but he doesn't bring in, he doesn't bring in the searchlight, so. I'm sleeping, and I get scared. I think it's a burglar or something, so I pull the covers over my head and sink down. And then the cover, and then something pulls it down, and I see the face that's on communion. Whitley would recall an obsessive habit of checking the locks and windows. I could see this as true due to Whitley living in New York City, roughly a decade prior to the evening of 1985. That night, Whitley would wake up in the middle of the night and recall it being filled with fear. He had the sense of dread. He recalls hearing a whooshing sound. He had an alarm system installed in the house, so he was confident that no one would be in the house. So he was confident that no one would be in the house.
So when he woke up again, he immediately was aware of a presence in the room. Whitley stated he blacked out and could tell something happened to his body. He recalls being paralyzed and remembers a feeling like going up in a fast elevator as he saw the trees whipping past him. He would find himself waking up, but he couldn't move. And then all of a sudden, one night in uh, December of 1985, this very peculiar event took place. Yeah, you were visited. I was not visited. I woke up in what appeared to be a nightmare situation in this stuffy little round room with all of these large-eyed sort of faces peering at me and uh, a machine that kept saying, what can we do to help you stop screaming? Which I realized when I heard this between screams that I was screaming, which I was so panicked I was even... Of course, it, it would be normal to yeah. be frightened. And I worked real hard to make this turn back into my bed and my bedroom it would not do that. The cabin and its grounds, where most of these unusual events continue to take place, were open for the encounters of the fourth kind film crew, with Mr. Streber serving as host. When they come here, we often hear a sound immediately above the house that will, that will come across into this area. And uh, uh, myself and a number of other people have seen things hanging over this deck or hanging in, in an immediate little clearing in the front yard, very small things but quite large ones sometimes hanging over the deck. In December of 1985, when the visitors first took me, they carried me down through these woods, which I remember very vividly, to a clearing uh, not too far from here, where I have since built a stone circle that I and the group of people who've had experiences here go to, to meditate at night. The strange occurrences outside the Streber cabin can only be compared to what happened inside. But this is where I was sleeping on the night of December the 26, 1985, when the visitors came in from the door across the room. And the next thing I knew, I was being literally carried out of the room in a state of paralysis. The figures began to dart around and weren't quite sure what was going on. This was his description Whitley was devastating after the visitor inserted the needle into his head. Chapter 3, The Aftermath Whitley woke up in the morning feeling confused and as if he had been in a fistfight the night before. He would later make a visit to the doctor's office. As he begins to tell the doctor the sequence of events, the doctor carefully examined Whitley and said, To be honest with you, Whitley, it really looks as if you've been abused. The following weeks, Whiteley would begin to fear that something might happen to his family and thought maybe his wife and son might be better off staying somewhere else. As his memories began to return, he just couldn't believe them to be true. Whitley at first thought that he had been drugged by somebody or been hypnotized and had the experience implanted into his mind. He did not want to believe that he had been abducted by aliens. Later, after some research about his abduction, he discovered that there had indeed been UFO activity in the area. Specifically, across the Hudson, there was a whole huge flap of the Hudson River Valley of UFO sightings, which was still just in the process of ending when Whitley's abduction took place. This was located approximately and only 30 miles away. Hudson Valley is, is a hotbed for people that have been abducted, for UFOs in the sky, for any kind of experience. With its star, Christopher Walken. I said to Whitley the other day that I had never had uh, such an experience, or really anything, including deja vu, right? That's not something that happens to me. And uh, I said that I had, you know, I'd never had anything like that. And he looked at me very seriously and he said, well, you're about to. Where is Whitley today? Currently, he resides in Santa Monica, California. 
Unfortunately, in 2014, he lost his beloved wife and streamer. He continues to host his weekly podcast on YouTube titled Dreamland by Whitley Streber. Also, he has experienced a resurgence in popularity due to a movie he co-authored with The Day After Tomorrow, which in 2004 was later adapted into a motion picture starring Dennis Quaid. Whitley Streber has also had his encounters retold in Discovery Plus Shock Doc, The Visitors, released in 2022. As of now, Whitley continues to claim he is visited regularly. Well, what do you think? Leave a comment in the comments and subscribe.